Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. I hope you're all fired up today because we've got the video Ali Stein Against Fire from this week's TSEC Championship. And it's a really nice game in the London system. Ali Stein is white and Fire is black. And we get to a position that's specified by TSEC which resembles a King's Indian type structure for black. It's an opening that Tkachev has used before. In this game, uh, Fire takes a hot pawn in the center of the board, and then Ali Stein uh, makes really good use of a long-term positional advantage in compensation, using the bishop pair and getting control of the long diagonal uh, for some really good attacking play and Ali Stein evaluates these possibilities really well. Ali Stein is a neural net type engine. Fire fills the heat uh, and tries to defend, uh, and in the end, it's all to no avail. Yeah, it's a really good game, and uh, well, as you can see, lots of opportunities for puns there, so uh, <laughs> let's have a look at the game. OK, let's have a look at this game. In the London system, Ali Stein, neural net engine, very, very strong. Played the last uh, super final of the TSEC against uh, Stockfish, against Fire, which is uh, one of the uh, older, but still a very, very strong uh, uh, traditional engine. So the uh, the opening was specified, d4, d6, bishop f4, the London system. Beloved of uh, such uh, creative players as, uh, well, Magnus Carlsen and uh, also the English Grandmaster Simon Williams, who's done uh, well, a number of excellent DVDs on that. So um, actually, this uh, opening is quite an unusual move order. Knight c6, knight f3, knight f6, c4, and g6. So black, uh, after, well, playing around a little bit, goes back into a King's Indian. And, uh, well, white chooses a very good system against that, um, playing um, uh, c4 um, with that as well. That gives um, white a lot of opportunity for a, um, a pawn break with c4 to c5, for example, which, um, well, activates the, um, the dark squared bishop. So knight d7, this was the last move specified by the, um, by the TSEC book. And, um, well, it's pretty logical. Um, uh, black is, uh, all black's pieces, of course, are aiming at that e5 uh, point. And when black achieves e7 to e5, then um, it'll hit the bishop on h2. So there's going to be a tempo. Um, the only, well, there's a slight problem with it, um, which I'll, uh, I'll talk about after showing you the next couple of moves. Bishop e2, e5, bishop h2. Um, the problem here, actually, for and this is now the end of the specified moves. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I think yeah, Bishop e two was the first move that um, uh, that the engines uh, found for themselves there. So um, I suppose the problem with Black's position is okay. It's great you've achieved e seven to e five, but um, well, you can see that the knight on d seven is somewhat uh, um, well self blocking. You can say because the bishop on c eight is uh, is uh, going to find it hard to get developed. Um, and it's a little bit hard to think for black, you know, well, what are you actually going to do? If I play um, a move like, um, or a concept like f5 and e4, then that actually opens up the h2, b8 diagonal for the bishop. And, uh, well, then moves like c4 to c5, attacking the pawn on d6, will be very annoying. So black actually plays, um, um, uh, yeah, a more solid uh, approach here, simply releasing the central tension and then putting the knight back on f6. And now black's, uh, you know, ready to complete the rest of his development. Um, so after castles, rookie eight. So what's black aiming for here? Well, knight e4 is, um, um, is a common idea. Um, simply to, um, well, just saying that black's got, um, less space. So exchanging some pieces will actually, uh, well, make his position a little bit easier to play. Um, now, I think Grachev, who's one of the big experts of the, uh, of the London system, um, he played bishop d3 in, um, in this uh, uh, position, which is quite logical, um, stopping the knight coming to e4 and also, well, dissuading the bishop from moving to f5. It's a pretty decent move. Um, Ali just plays a very simple move, just queen d2. Um, this has been played before, but um, uh, we're not getting, uh, we're starting to leave, you know, any sort of... Uh, 
um, top class games now. You know, just uh, these are slightly lower class games that have been played in uh, in this position. So knight e4 takes takes bishop d3 chasing the rook back. Rook e8 and rook e1. Um, and here um, in this position, a5 uh, was played by black in a previous game, which is uh, certainly not uh, not silly at all. Um, Black's uh, simply waiting and also preventing white from expanding on the queen side with uh, with b4. It's a very sensible move. I mean, white's just um, a little bit better here, a bit more space, slightly nicer pieces, you know, but uh, but nothing amazing. Black's uh, position is a bit like in certain lines of the Alakines as well. Uh, so black white, black white, white space. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, uh, in the other kind, I suppose you'd, you'd normally try and get in d5, wouldn't you? Um, uh, at some stage, the only problem with, with going d5 here is that the um, is that the bishop on h2 is um, is uh, is going to get active again. It's uh, it's strange, really, this bishop on h2. I mean, um, on the one hand, you can say it's not doing a great deal there, and it's blocked in by the pawns on <clears throat> d6 and c7. But on the other hand, it also dissuades black from. Um, um, from uh, from from playing any of the from playing a freeing break like d5 so yeah swings and roundabouts really <clears throat> so so far this position is looking really quite normal that's right yeah i mean it's uh, nothing much has happened here but now fire takes um well a, 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 i think what you can call a typical engine decision here and decides to grab this pawn on d4 um now it does say very brave I think it would be called a hot pawn for fire to take. Exactly, exactly. It's, um, I mean, it, it, fire takes the pawn in this way because, uh, well, if knight d4 here, you could take, take, and go bishop takes g6, which um, well, would be rather unpleasant. I mean, black can take a pawn like this, but this is really, really risky. Um, I'll play something like bishop f4 or maybe queen d4 first and get my bishop to the long diagonal, you know, and uh, this is very, very dangerous. So by taking on d4 with a bishop, um, black makes sure... distinguishes the other possibilities. <laughs> exactly. My goodness. I was going to say, you're on fire. My goodness. So um, if bishop g6 here, then black can interpose this nice little knight f3, gf, and then hg. Um, which is, uh, well, obviously white's still got the, the, the dark square bishop and uh, black's got a lot of weak dark squares, but white's king side is also um, pretty bad, really. So, um, you know, that's that's why fire does it in this way. Um, I mean, you know, white plays bishop e4 in this position. Um, and what can you say about black's position? Well, you know, black is a pawn up. I mean, that's great. Um, but, um, well, in principle, there's two problems. First of all, the queen side um, is... Uh, is is rather undeveloped, so um, it's going to take Black a little while to um, uh, to get developed. And Black's got to be very careful about this move c4 to c5, this lever um, that's um, attacking the pawn on d6 and is going to activate that bishop on h2. And if you go d take c5, then well c7 becomes very weak. And we see lots of uh, actually lots of tactical moments in the game where when you play rook b8, you know playing c5 is very dangerous because taking a pawn on c7 will attack the rook on b8. So that's one uh, little problem. I mean, the other big problem for black, and that's he's done that entirely to himself, is, um, is the, uh, the weak dark squares on the king side. Um, however, you know, for the moment, um, exploiting those is not easy because um, the bishop's on h2, whereas you'd really want it on the long diagonal. So actually, um, if you look closely, you'll see that black's next moves um, are kind of based around keeping that bishop on h2 and not allowing it to escape through f4. Because black plays knight e6, and after b4, just uh, supporting that lever, uh, c5, black plays queen g5, I mean, offering the exchange of queens, but also um, keeping real control of that f4 square so the bishop can't get out there. Rook e3, and now h5, which is a generally useful move. I, I will have to say that. I mean, that's uh, it's good to give the king some air. Um, and um, well, I mean, the next move as well, Einstein plays uh, bishop d5. Just a nice creeping, consolidating move with the bishop. Just uh, creep, just, uh, you know, also opening up the e file and uh, well, also giving the possibility of, uh, of capturing that knight on e6 at times. And black plays king h7. 
Um, and again, that's a, a generally useful move um, because that defends the square h6. And well, I mean, uh, it's going to crop up later in the game. You'll notice how this queen is sort of x-ray looking, the queen on d2, sorry, queen on d2 is x-ray looking at that square on h6. So, you know, that was quite a dangerous square. It's just that my human brain is uh, is really shouting at me, you know, you know, look at that rook on a8, look on that bishop on c8, get them active, even at the cost of a pawn, you know, anything. Um, whereas, you know, just an engine just, uh, well, it just sort of, you know, shrugs its shoulders and says, well, you know, I'm not getting mated yet. So, you know, why should I hurry? Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, this is something that, you know, that engines have, have brought to the game that, uh, you know, that humans just cannot do. Um, uh, but I mean, you know, trying to uh, to put an engine away when it's defending like this is unbelievably difficult. And uh, but somehow the NNs, although they're not, you know, great calculating machines, they seem to, um, yeah, they seem to be able to cause a lot of damage to uh, to these traditional engines from these types of positions. Um, and uh, I mean, I think it's you know, it's only stockfish that uh, that has a you know some chance of uh, of defending uh, positions in this way. So Ali Stein, they, they moved around a little bit with these little shimmies, which I, I, I will confess I don't fully understand. But then um, <coughs> Fire decided that it was time now to develop its queen side. Brought the queen back to d8. Ali Stein put its queen back on d2. And then rook b8. There we are. Defending the pawn on b7 and uh, preparing bishop d7. So, as we said... See, the rook is on the same diagonal now as that bishop on h2. Um, and in certain lines, that becomes a feature. Exactly. And, uh, well, we uh, we sort of mentioned it before. After rook b8, c5. That's the lever that we want. And now this bishop on h2 is going to become very, very active. So, d takes c5 was played. And now... Um, um, this is the point where um, where it gets really really interesting. You know, up till now it's been uh, just a you know normal uh, normal interesting game, but now uh, Ali Stein really starts uh, showing some uh, some fantastic um, attacking technique. You know, but sort of kind of strategical as well because it's not uh, a huge amount of tactics. It's just putting the pieces on uh, on excellent squares. And um, uh, Bishop e5 was the first move that it played. So just exploiting the fact that the d pawn's been moved away from d6. And now the bishop's jumping into e5, um, well, eyeing all those uh, all those tasty uh, weak black dark squares on the uh, on the king side. Um, and this move actually seems to have been underestimated by um, by other engines. Um, whereas Ali Stein was very very positive. Um, I mean, you've got to watch out with this evaluation. It's um, I think the uh, the conversion's gone a bit off somehow. So uh, it always looks incredibly. Uh, uh, optimistic, you know, but um, but still, even allowing for that, um, it really was very clear that White was um, was really on the way to winning, whereas other engines were just thinking slight advantage for uh, for White. It's very impressive. Um, so what what is um, what is actually the what what can Black actually do to defend? Well, the um, the main line that the engines wanted beforehand um, was Knight D4, and this is a, a very sensible idea. If I go Bishop takes D4, very very D4. Then we just take, take, and we go bishop e6, and we've escaped. But we're not going to give up that dark square bishop, are we? We're going to take with a pawn on c5. Now, Stockfish says that um, the bishop e6 is the best defense here. Um, it leads to similar lines, but I'm just going to show you queen d5, which is the main uh, line I analyzed, um, uh, because I think it's, it really shows a lot of the themes in the position. So bishop takes d4 here. And, uh, and this is really dangerous. It's threatening rook e8 straight away. Exactly. So black's got to find a way to deal with that. And in actual fact, well, black can develop the bishop either to d7, to e6 or to f5. Um, and let's have a look at them in turn. Um, bishop d7 is the, the weakest in actual fact, um, simply because it blocks the d file. And actually, the key to black's defense in this position is to attack that bishop on d4 with as much firepower as it can and stop white from um uh from well from from encroaching further onto black dark squares and bishop d7 doesn't actually do this and this move is very very strong rook e4 defending the bishop on d4 so threatening queen h6 and if you go king h7 there's a little tactic here just give you really a really nice move here bishop g7 exactly bishop g7 the rook threatening the queen 
And Bishop G7 threatens the Queen coming into H6 and delivering mate. And delivering mate like that. Very nice idea and uh, happens a lot. You're going to see a few more variations like that. So, oops, Bishop E6 um, is uh, another idea. A little bit better because... Um, after all, the uh, the rook can come to d8, attacking the bishop on d4. You know, so that that sounds pretty good. But after rook e5, um, we've got um, if queen d7 here, actually queen d7. Um, then um, white's actually got rook takes h5 here. Um, black does have a miracle defense in f6, just to avoid losing on the spot. But it's still uh, horrific for black. Um, but the mate the mate is very nice. Uh, so if takes here, I go check. King there, check. King there, check on h8, and then bishop f6 with mate. And uh, all white's pieces combining to, uh, you know, the pawn on c5 as well to um, uh, to deliver mate. Very nice one there. And um, if queen c4, I go rook e4 again, this move, very important. Rook d8, and then queen f4. And uh, and now we're going to get a line that uh, actually, uh, uh, this is my, I'll show you my main line without computer aid. That's how I always tend to analyze these games. First of all, I try... Um, uh, by myself, and then afterwards I put the engine on and uh, pray that uh, that uh, it's not going to say I've been too stupid. Uh, but this main line is actually um, actually quite nice. So um, white's threatening queen f6, so black tries bishop f5. Um, and then uh, we've got this move, bishop f6. So um, uh, attacking the, the, the bishop, uh, the rook on d8, also attacking the queen on c4, of course. Queen c4, queen h6 is, uh, is going to be simple mate. And there's a, there's a lovely trick that black can try that just doesn't quite work. So king h2, bishop e4, queen h6. And now can you spot black's miracle try? Black's got a really beautiful move here, which is like a phoenix out of the flames. <laughs> <laughs> rook to h1. Oh, well done. Brilliant. Rook h1. So if king h1, then uh, queen f1 check is uh, pretty good. Uh, sorry, just mating. Went a bit quickly through that one, sorry. And uh, But king g3 is absolutely fine. And there's uh, no way actually for black to do any more, anything more than give, um, well, maximum a couple of harmless checks. So, for example, uh, if rook h3, if I took with a king, I'd have queen e6 check. But here g takes h3 is uh, is simply winning queen d3 king h2 and uh, we're going to give mate on g7 or h8 depending on uh, what we feel like so um yeah i mean this is very very dangerous um i think the the best move that black's got and you'll, you'll probably understand why now is to play bishop f5 um because what you're doing you're covering this square on e4 so this resource rook e5 to e4 isn't in the position but simply playing rook e5 Queen d7, queen e3, for example. You get out of this pin on the d file so that you can just move your bishop away if it gets attacked. And then your rook's going to aim, aim for e7. You've got queen h6 coming in as well. I mean, even if it's not um, you know, a force win, it's horrific for black to defend. You know, So this is really, uh, this is really very, very strong. It looks like uh, Ali assessed this uh, you know, much, much better than, uh, than the other engines. There is one other move that I looked at, um, um, apart from what Fire played, which was Bishop d7, and it was this move King h7, uh, just covering the um, um, the square on h6. And um, I was really, I was, I was, yeah, I spent a, a little while on this. I, I couldn't really think, you know, what I wanted to do against this. And then I suddenly remembered the lessons that I'd learned uh, when analysing Tal's attacks. And um, actually, it turned out that he, Tal's attacks were very, very simple. He either attacked stuff or he took stuff. So, um, well, in that case, I've always tried to use that as a, as a general, um, a general kind of help, you know, when, uh, when I can't think, you know, how, how should I, you know, try and proceed? Can I attack stuff? Well, rook f3, let's attack f7. And that does actually this approach just keeps on turning up the heat. Exactly. Turning up the heat. That's a very good one. So it's um, um, so actually it's, it's very difficult for black to, uh, to deal with this a move like f5 just, um, well, it is, is horrific. And um, uh, so a move like queen e7, um, you actually see a nice little point here with the uh, vulnerability of the rook on b8. Because I take on c5, and after bishop d7, I've got this trick, bishop takes c7. Uh, if knight takes c7, then uh, rook f7 check is uh, uh, winning. 
And, um, well, actually, I think Rook G8 is more or less the only move you've got. And then I go Bishop D6, and then I grab the pawn on B7 afterwards, and I'm a pawn up with the two bishops in that fantastic position. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is just also very strong indeed. Um, so Fire played Bishop D7, which, you know, is pretty reasonable. Um, and here, Adi Stein plays um, yes, a really... Yeah, really a couple of beautiful moves that, um, um, that, uh, are all based around, uh, well, all, all the pieces dancing around the same, um, central squares, which is really, yeah, really very unusual. So Ali played bishop b2, uh, a great little move there, just, uh, threatening queen c3, um, teeing up on the, uh, on the long diagonal. And, um, the nice bit about it is that if black plays, um, um, the move king h7, which was, uh, one thing I was looking at, just to try and stop um, the queen coming into h6. Then white's got this brilliant move, rook e5. So the bishop and the rook have, uh, have swapped places. Um, you know, all the while, whilst, you know, there's a pawn on prize, you know, and you sort of think, uh, well, you know, how, how is white going to break through? And there's just white swapping pieces around, uh, you know, around the same central squares. Very impressive. But the big threat is, well, you've got two big threats, either bishop e4 or even rook takes h5. Um, so, um, uh, and if black plays bishop c6, which is uh, quite an obvious one, it looks like you're pinned, you go queen c2, unpinning, with a terrible idea of uh, bishop d5, rook h5, and rook h8 mate. So fantastic uh, little, yeah, little swap around of pieces there with the, uh, you know, the bishop moving back and then the rook coming forwards in variations. So fire played this move queen f8. Um, which, um, uh, also protects the, uh, the pawn, the, the, the h6 square. Um, and, uh, you know, also gets out of a possible pin on the d file, you know, with something like rook d3. But now, uh, Ali played, uh, the second retreating bishop move. Um, again, playing around on central square. It's a really nice move. And it's bishop e4. So attacking the bishop on d7, and it's not at all obvious, but actually that bishop is overloaded. Um, because, um, if the bishop comes to c6, there's a great destroying move for uh, for fire here, for uh, Ali Stein here, and that's um, Bishop takes G six. Bishop takes G six. Bishop takes G six, and um, well, it's just uh, end of story. F takes G six. Captures the knight on E six is hanging. Exactly, which is uh, well horrific for uh, for Black, of course. So, actually, what does Black do with this bishop? Um, the queen doesn't want to move away from the kingside dark squares here. Um, if I could play something like queen d6, then I, I could just go rook d3 and pick up that piece, which is uh, also very nice. Um, so, well, rook d8, I mean, well, I could go bishop c8, but um, um, that looks rather sad in actual fact. Um, and rook d8 was what fire played. It says to go out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's what fire played, rook d8, but, uh, but then bishop f6 attacking the, um, uh, the rook on d8. And yeah, the rook on d8 can't move away because the, um, uh, the bishop on d7 is pinned. And actually, um, white's also threatening to, uh, to increase that pressure just by playing rook e3 to d3. So, um, well, fire played bishop b5, and after takes, 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 takes. And white was the, um, uh, well, the exchange for pawn up, uh, but, you know, with just a, a completely winning position. Um, I'm only going to show you just a couple more moves because um, um, this took rather a long time to uh, to win. And um, 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 Ali enjoyed, uh, I'll say, herself very, very much by um, by uh, playing the rook round, uh, you know, to uh, to one side and then the other before eventually breaking through. But um, essentially what happened... Um, was that the? Um, uh, well, I'll show you in very quick style, but you'll see how uh, um, how pieces got uh, got moved around. This this tension is critical. Actually, the uh, in the end, what happened was that the rook came round to the eighth rank and then captured this uh, this h pawn. But it took another thirty or forty moves. So uh, um, I'll give you, I'll put the uh, the link to the PGN uh, um, in the in the um, uh, in the in the comments just so that you can uh, download it if you uh, if you want to have a look at the rest yourself 
Anyway, that was uh, that game. I hope you enjoyed it very much. Um, I think it was a very good example of, um, of Ali Stein's uh, attacking prowess. It's, uh, I think, probably well, one of the most aggressive of the uh, of the NNs. You know, very, very uh, uh, can play very strongly, very sharply. And uh, and this sequence of three moves: bishop e5, bishop b2. You know, with the idea in some lines of playing rook e5, and then bishop e4 is extremely fine, you know, extremely uh, precise and unusual. Um, and also, you know, interesting to see how, um, um, well, you know, the schema against the London system, how um, uh, how this actually, you know, worked out very well. I think um, this bishop on h2, you know, it looked uh, inactive for, you know, for long periods of the game, but it was always there, you know, latent with uh, combining with um, with a white pawn on uh, on c4, moving to c5, you know, to um, to undermine Black's uh, queenside structure. And I think that latent threat also, um, well, restricted an awful lot of Black's possible avenues of counterplay. So, um, yeah, really a, um, a very interesting line. And, uh, um, well, it looks uh, from from this game, it looks uh, looks pretty good for white, actually. So there we are. I mean, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, just remains for us to say that, um, well, if you enjoy our channel, then uh, subscribe, subscribe, please. And uh, well, if um, you haven't taken a look at Game Changer yet, our uh, our book about uh, Alpha Zero and how it plays and thinks, then uh, there's a lot of good games in there. A lot of good games, and actually, it helps you, you know, um, understanding how Alpha Zero thinks and plays, and makes helps you understand how. NNs like Ali Stein, which are you know essentially inspired by the science that uh, the Deep Mind released in its uh, scientific papers about Alpha Zero, um, well, it helps you understand how they play and why they play as they do, and uh, you know what the differences are between uh, between uh, um, neural nets and uh, and the traditional engines. But anyway, um, I hope uh, hope you enjoyed that. Keep on watching. We've got loads more videos planned. Loads more videos about uh, fantastic TCC games because there've been a, a few really great ones recently. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for watching.